please listen to your seniors. At the Walt Disney World Resort, Disneyland Resort, or on Disney Cruises, there is no special recognition or cost-saving discounts offered specifically for seniors. Not Disney Park admission tickets, Disney merchandise, Disney restaurants, Disney resorts from value through deluxe villa classifications. Nothing. The members of the Disney for Seniors Facebook group, now over 35,000 members strong, would suggest that the Walt Disney Company start to listen to seniors. It is personal for us seniors. It is business for Disney. In this video, we will provide two statistical-based reasons why Disney should start paying more attention to this huge demographic segment, which we believe will support the position that it is in the Walt Disney Company's best interest to start to listen to its seniors. Hi, this is Dan from Nancy and Dan Travel to Disney and the founders of the Disney for Seniors Facebook group. Several weeks ago, we published two videos titled Seniors at Disney, wherein we summarize the results from a poll of over 10,000 members of the Disney for Seniors Facebook group when we asked them what they would suggest to improve the experience for seniors at Disney parks. The part one video focused on non-cost saving suggestions for Disney parks to consider. The part two video focused on cost saving suggestions made by us seniors. We will put a link to both the Seniors at Disney Part 1 and Part 2 videos at the end of this video for you to directly access, so stay for that. And as you proceed through this video, please do give it a thumbs up, share it with your other Disney-loving seniors, and subscribe to this channel and consider joining the Disney for Seniors Facebook group. Seniors are Disney's most loyal customers. They were there at the opening of the Disneyland theme park in 1955, and there again at the opening of the Magic Kingdom theme park at Walt Disney World in 1971. Us seniors were the ones watching the Mickey Mouse Club, were taken to and took our children and now grandchildren to Disney and more recently Pixar and Marvel movies at the movie theaters, paid for trips to Disney theme parks, paid for Disney cruises, and more. Walt Disney Company, where is now the love for seniors? Here then are the two reasons examined in this video that are and will continue to increasingly impact Disney's bottom line profitability. Because as a public company, all decisions made by any public company arguably are made with one focus. And the Walt Disney Company is no different. Impact on its bottom line. First, let's look at a few graphs. Now, not to worry, these are pretty easy and give you a clearer picture than just looking at some numbers. As we start to look at these graphs, remember these three dates already mentioned. 1955, when Disneyland theme park opened. 1971, when Disney's Magic Kingdom theme park at Walt Disney World Resort opened. And 2020, the last full US census. And while there is no universal definition of when an adult becomes a senior, for this video, we're going to use these three definitions to compare. Those 65 years of age and older, those 55 years of age and older, and what AARP uses, those 50 years of age and older. Ready? Like flying with Peter Pan and Tinkerbell off to Neverland, here we go. Our first graph or chart shows the total population of the United States, 65 years and older at five different points in time. In 1955, when Disneyland theme park opened, there was per the US Censor Bureau, 14.1 million seniors 65 years and older. In 1970, a year before the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World Resort opened, that number of seniors 65 years and older had grown from 14.1 million to 20 million. Fast forward to the turn of the century, 2000. There were then 35 million seniors in the US, 65 years and older. In 2010, that number became 40.3 million. And in 2020, the date of the last full census, that number had exploded from 40.3 million to 55.8 million. So using 65 years of age and older, the market segment of seniors had grown almost four times in size since the Disneyland theme park first opened. Think about that for a minute. 
Yet, what about those other two definitions of seniors in the United States, those 55 years of age and older, and those 50 years of age and older? On the second chart, we have the same five points in time. The blue bars represent seniors 65 years and older. The orange bars represent seniors starting at 55 years and older. And lastly, the green bars represent seniors 50 years and older. Again, the definition used by AARP. Starting on the left, we've already seen that in 1955 when Disneyland first opened, there were 14.1 million seniors 65 years and older. Now, the orange bar indicates that still in 1955, there were 25.2 million seniors in the United States. And still in 1955, using AARP's definition of a senior, those 50 years of age and older, there were 37.5 million seniors, about two and a half times the number using the more restrictive 65 years of age and older. You can see that in each of the other four selected periods of time, as one would expect, the number of seniors for each of these three definitions, the number of seniors living in the United States significantly increased. If we look at the number of seniors over on the right, representing the year 2020, we can see the following numbers of seniors present in the United States. 55.8 million seniors, 65 years and older, as we saw in the first chart in this video. 99.2 million seniors, 55 years and older, and 119.9 million seniors, 50 years and older. And remember, that is just the number of seniors living in the United States. This does not include seniors living in other countries like Canada, for example, who visit the Disneyland Resort in California or the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida on a regular basis. Regardless of which of the three definitions of seniors in the United States one wants to use, this is a huge market segment that the Walt Disney Company should not ignore. Still not convinced? Let's look at this in a different way. In this chart, we have the same five periods of time, 1955 through to 2020. Yet here we are looking at the percentage of the US population that is 65 years or older. Once again, on the left, in 1955, when the Disneyland theme park first opened, 8.5% of the total population living in the United States was 65 years or older. In 1970, a year before the Walt Disney Resort opened, seniors 65 years or older made up now 9.9% of the total U.S. population. At the turn of the century in 2000, 12.4% of the population living in the United States were 65 years or older. In 2010, that percentage grew again to 13.0%. And in 2020, the last year of the full census of the United States, this percentage of seniors 65 years and older ballooned to 16.8%. So, once again, compared to 1955 when Disneyland theme park first opened, the percentage of the United States population 65 years and older had almost doubled. But what about those 55 years or older and those 50 years and older? Curious about the percentage of the U.S. population for those other two definitions of seniors? In this next graph, once again, starting on the left, in 1955, we know that 8.5% of the population living in the United States was 65 years and older. We also now see that in 1955, 15.3% were 55 years and older, while 22.7% of those living in the U.S. were 50 years and older. Fast forward to the right to see what these percentages look like in 2020. In 2020, as we saw in the previous chart, that seniors 65 years and older represented 16.8% of the total population of the United States. We also see now that in orange, in 2020, by comparison, 29.9% of the population living in the United States were 55 years or older, and a whopping 36.2% were 50 years or older. Again, regardless of which of these three definitions of seniors you want to use, this is a massive market segment of the population in the United States 
that the Walt Disney Company should not be ignoring. Yet, the size for each of these three definitions of seniors is one perspective. What about how much money seniors have to spend? That matters as well. Now, these numbers were not so easy to find in our research. I could not find it in the U.S. Census Bureau website. So I kept digging, and this is what I was able to find. First, there are two terms that are close but not exact when trying to quantify how much money one has to spend on offerings from the Walt Disney Company. The first term we'll look at is the term discretionary income. Discretionary income is simply the amount of net income an individual has to spend after all necessary expenses are paid. Let's take a look at which age group in the USA has the most discretionary income, because let's face it, one is going to pay for housing and food and other essentials before spending any money on a non-essential, such as going to a theme park or a vacation resort. According to Google's AI, meaning Google's artificial intelligence software, in 1955, the age group with the most of this discretionary income were those between 35 and 54 years of age. In 2020, once again, according to Google's AI, the age group with the most discretionary income in the United States were baby boomers. And what do we tend to call those in the 56 to 74 years old age brackets? Seniors. Here is a similar yet slightly different term. It's not discretionary income, but disposable income. Disposable income is the amount of net income an individual has to spend after taxes and all mandatory expenses have been paid. It's very similar. Using one source I found here, in 2024 in America, 70% of disposable income was held by people 60 and over. And what do we tend to call most, if not all, of this age group? Seniors. Lastly, I found another source going back to 2019, which provided information on how much different age groups have to spend annually. You can see the numbers for yourself. Baby boomers, defined here as those 55 to 75 years of age, had the most to spend of any of these age groups displayed. And what do we call many, if not all, of those in this age group? Once again, say it with me, seniors. Yet, let's look at the chart again, but this time focus on what is termed the silence, those over 75 years of age. This age group is shown to spend the least amount of money each year. What do we call this age group? Of course, all of them are seniors by anyone's definition. Yet, this goes to the ideas raised in the Part 2 Seniors at Disney video that some seniors would benefit directly and significantly for any of the different cost savings ideas for seniors which were raised in that Part 2 video. Yet the Walt Disney Company can use whatever definition it wants when defining a senior. It can even use those over 75 years of age for some of the ideas generated from the Disney for Seniors Facebook group. Do you remember what all of these non-cost savings and those cost savings ideas were? If not, or if you want to remind yourself, here are the links to start both the Part 1 and Part 2 Seniors at Disney videos. So click on either link to start either video right now, and we'll see you next time.